I'm John Ott, and I would like to show you the time-lapse greenhouse where I make time-lapse pictures of flowers growing. Here is a time-lapse picture of an iris, which is a nocturnal or night-blooming flower. This is a hibiscus, which blooms during the daytime. And here is a camellia that blooms according to a relationship between temperature and the dark nighttime period. Dr. John Ott, pioneer in time-lapse photography and father of the science of photobiology, presents his work in a new DVD video, Exploring the Spectrum. Digitally remastered from an older 16 millimeter film which Dr. Ott showed at his lectures, this fascinating video is rich with wonderful time-lapse images. Dr. Ott also addresses critical health issues of today. He found natural trace amounts of ultraviolet radiation as the human species once received daily from the sun were necessary for human health. This natural and necessary trace ultraviolet is unfortunately screened out by most window glass and even eyeglasses. Here you see the streaming of the chloroplasts within the cells of Aladea grass. I have found that under full natural sunlight, all of these little chloroplasts get into a streaming pattern and go in an orderly fashion around and around to each end of the cell. But if the light is filtered through ordinary glass that cuts out the ultraviolet, or, as in this case, an ordinary incandescent microscope light source lacking the ultraviolet was used, many of the chloroplasts drop out of the streaming pattern and form a sluggish clump in one part of the cell or another. This wonderful video shows the behavior and health effects of different light colors or frequencies on plants and animals including humans. For example, Dr. Ott's work showed that fluorescent lights and the most common types of light bulbs typically gave off a very incomplete spectrum as compared to natural sunlight. Mice raised in predominantly red or pink colored environments suffered terribly, developing open sores, losing their tails, and some even developed cancers. These observations suggested a widespread unscientific and medical hysteria about trace ultraviolet frequencies in natural sunlight. After noting how adding a little long wave ultraviolet to the incandescent light of the microscope made just about all of the chloroplasts get back into their full streaming pattern, I decided to experiment in adding some of these same ultraviolet wavelengths to the laboratory animal compartments but I had no way of measuring how much ultraviolet was actually reaching the cells in the microscope slides. While I was thinking about this project, I happened to have dinner in the restaurant known as the Well of the Sea in the basement of the old Hotel Sherman in Chicago. The first thing that caught my attention were the black light ultraviolet lights placed in the ceiling and in the alcoves. This was the same type of long wave ultraviolet light that I had used in my microscope experiments. It was installed in the restaurant purely for decorative and ornamental purposes. I asked the captain how long the lights had been installed and whether he had noted any harmful effects as far as the men working for him were concerned. That is, had the men developed any skin cancer, cataracts, or other problems commonly associated with exposure to ultraviolet. He advised that the lights had been installed for over 20 years, that essentially the same group of men were still working there, and that their health record had been so unusually good that the manager of the hotel, under medical supervision, had been investigating the situation to try to determine why this particular group of men always were on the job, even during some of the most severe flu epidemics, and also why they seemed to be so unusually congenial and efficient in their work. Dr. Ott used time-lapse photography to analyze for behavior and activity. He found that laboratory mice exhibited a very clear hyperactivity due only to exposure from an unshielded television set. For example, the mice on the left side of this picture are exposed to low-level electromagnetic radiation, while the mice on the right side are protected by a lead shield. The difference in their behavior is obvious.
A similar overexcitation exists when plants or children are chronically exposed to television sets or standard fluorescent lighting. Some people like the expanded foliage and big leaves of the overexcited plant, but when this affects children, the results can be disastrous, leading to the force feeding of behavior modifying drugs to the children to compensate for the irritating electromagnetic environment of the closed in classroom. This new 90-minute DVD not only features exciting time-lapse images of flowers, plants, and insects, but covers health issues related to light color frequency, ultraviolet deprivation, and electromagnetic overdose. It is a fascinating educational documentary on the life's work of Dr. John Ott, suitable for both children or adults. In fact, it is part of the censored science of the 20th century, which the mainstream news media has systematically refused to report. You are encouraged to get this DVD and educate yourself.